Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a topic that is very important to everyone who is working with data. It's monitoring your pipelines. It's finding out is everything still working? Is the processing working as intended as you programmed it? It's something that I have been struggling a lot before in my time as a data engineer. And so in this video, we're going to talk about why this is important, what is the problem with the way how you usually do this, and then I'm showing you a way of doing this on the cloud, integrated through data observability. This video is sponsored by Kensu.io. Kensu is a company who is actually focusing on data observability. They built a platform around this, and when they approached me, to show what they have created, I was like, oh, that's something that I could have used a lot of times before. So that's why I want to show you this topic and get you more into data observability. You usually run into problems with monitoring your pipelines when you create multi-stage pipelines. So you have some sources, you get the data from these sources, you do multiple steps of processing, maybe a storage in between, and then process it more and then put it into a destination. The first thing that people do is they go and they create application logs. A way of doing this is every step of the processing is writing the data into a log file. And then if something goes wrong, if you find out that some things go wrong, you go into the log and you try to find within the log file the source of the problem, which is a way of doing it but let's be honest everybody who's already done this it's very complicated it takes a lot of time and it's super annoying generally a lot of people then for instance use tools like prometheus and grafana to have a logging system where your applications are sending the logs to prometheus and then you have a grafana dashboard where you monitor your data now the problem with this is it adds complexity, right? It adds two more tools. It adds infrastructure, networking. You have a team that needs to take care of these tools. If something goes wrong, that debugs what's going on, that does updates and security. So it's, a, it's also not perfect. Then you search for a way of actually doing this better. And a way of doing this better is exactly what Kenzu does is creating a platform that basically does everything for you where you have to just lock your data. Here's a marketing example where the monitoring of your data, the observing what's actually going on is usually very difficult. So you have on the left here, you have a data load Python code. This Python code takes in two CSV files, an order CSV and a customer CSV. You're doing with pandas, you're doing some transformation and merging of the data, and then you load it into the data store here, into orders and customer tables. Then once the data is in, you're doing transformations, for instance, like with DBT on your marketing data, and you take the orders and the customers and transform it into orders and customers data set, and then in, you extract a contacts list from this, right? So this has multiple steps. Now, how do you figure out what's going on in each of these steps? Here's the important stuff that you have and that is a part of data-driven development is you have the metadata, so you, or you need to create the metadata of how do these files look? What's the uh, average value of each of these columns or is the standard deviation and so on so that you can actually profile this of this data. You need to somehow lock or understand the lineage of this. Okay, you started with the orders, you put this into the data store, then you created the orders and customers data set out of this, and then you created the customers list so that you understand how does everything fit together, in what order does it come. So if you create a more complex pipeline, you can find out okay, I have a problem in this step. Where does this come from? Where do I need to look next? Right? So if you have a problem here in the contacts list, you would not 
uh, go directly into your order CSV. You would say, okay, let's look into the orders and customers if this generated the right data. And then you would take the st next step back. Let me show you another example. This is a finance data pipeline. And we're going to take this as an example then on the Kenzo platform. I'm going to show you how to do this, the monitoring there. So the idea is you have stock prices CSV on the left, you with pandas and the data ingestion Python, you process this into the monthly assets. And from there you go with the Spark code and then you basically generate a CSV file for BuzzFeed and for AppTech and so on and so on. Now this here is the exact same thing, multiple stages of pipelines or multi-stage pipeline. It's difficult to monitor. Also, it has different tools in this. Just like the one we have been looking at with the marketing. The problem with usually with logging data and logging analytics is you have a server somewhere and this server needs to get the data. And how this is very often done is you install on your processing servers or on your processing infrastructure, you install agents and these agents then send the data to your monitoring system. What I like about Kenzu is that they don't make you to install an agent on your infrastructure. They build wrappers for your processings. You're processing data with Python and with pandas. They made a wrapper around pandas so that whenever you create a pandas data frame, there is automatically metrics generated for these data frames. And these metrics are automatically sent to the platform. So you don't have to do some integration. You create a configuration for this. And then once your code, once you create a data frame, this automatically generates the statistics, sends it over. Same thing for Spark, PySpark. Same thing for Scala and Spark. It's everything is done in the background. You just need to put this into your code, basically this wrapper into your code, the wrapper for your Spark session, the wrapper for Pandas. And then you just normally work like with PySpark or with Pandas. The key here is data observability driven development. I know it's a mouthful, but the idea behind this is really cool. And it's that you don't bolt on your observability, you don't bolt on your monitoring, you already put it into your development. And that's what I find cool about these wrappers is you don't have to mind of how do you generate the statistics, the metadata for your processing. It's already built in. All right, let's do a quick hands-on. I went ahead and I sent in data so we can actually have something to look at. This is the Kenzu sandbox where you have your data sources. You have your projects below that. You have rules that you have set either programmatically or here in the user interface and you have tickets when something has happened and an alarm came up. It's how I would start my day. I would look, oh, are there tickets here? Yes, there are three tickets. Let's look into these tickets. Now, the first one is the one that we're actually going to look at. So the first ticket here says intraday delta standard deviation is out of range for report bus feed CSV. So we know, okay, we created a CSV file and there is uh, the standard deviation for something out of range. Oh, okay, let's look at this. Here's a button on the right, view details. Then you jump in, this is the data source. You can click here, see, you see here, min max, observed uh, 0 0.88, and it should be uh, max 0 0.20. You can go into that data source and see here your rule. So this is my rule, open ticket for the data source, min max, and now you have some options. You can say, okay, display that rule and display what has happened. And the cool thing then is it automatically selects everything for you. Here's an exclamation mark. So you see here, oh, intraday delta standard deviation that is above is high here on this day, right? Or for this month. It shows you that also in a table 
also very useful. You see your ticket again, and then you can look and into the lineage because now you want to see, okay, where does that come from? What what's the what's the issue here, right? So what's the issue? Our report bus feed, where does that come from? That that comes from the monthly assets CSV, and before that we have our individual CSVs for Microsoft Apple, BuzzFeed, iMetal, and so on. Right? So you would say, okay, uh, this is our lineage, creation of, this This is before that, after there is nothing. This is our fields that we have here. The close, the intraday delta, and the open. So we would say, okay, let's look at the monthly assets. Click on this. Then you select here, view data source details. And now we're in the monthly assets. So you see the lineage now changed. Now the right part is our monthly assets, left are our uh, CSV files. And when we go usage of them, we see here, this monthly assets is used by report AppTech CSV and report BuzzFeed CSV, where we had our problems. So then you could say, okay, now let's, let's explore this and the observations part here, this is where you can explore. A simple way of doing this as I understand here, you select attributes and the symbol category actually shows you um, the the columns or the yeah, the columns that are in this data set and also some statistics for this. So this would be the first way how I would start. And then, well, the chart is doesn't say as much here, but the interesting part is here when you look at the table, you would see that number of categories here, you had six in the first run, seven in the second run, six in the third run. So something changed here. And you see here these columns, you had BuzzFeed, you had nothing for BuzzFeed in the first run and 21 for ENFA. Then you had that bit of a switch here. So 19 for BuzzFeed, three of ENFA and then BuzzFeed 20 and ENFA not available. So you know something, there, ha there has been a change in the naming uh, has happened here because these are, uh, I think these are business days that this counts. Now with that, we know, okay, there has been an issue um, here, how this data is coming. And then you can see, okay, there has been a reporting difference in your, uh, in your BuzzFeed data. The BuzzFeed data isn't correct because something has changed here. So what would you do? You know, something is here wrong, BuzzFeed, ENFA, what's going on? So then, okay, let's do a drill down. We know from our lineage here, this monthly asset and data is coming out of these files. So most likely the BuzzFeed file will be the one that we actually need. So you would click on the BuzzFeed, say view data source. Now we're in here, we see how the lineage goes on, right? This BuzzFeed is our source, so there's no creation off, but we have our usage. And then we would go scroll up, observations we would most likely go again for symbol here and we would again see here this change of uh, symbol ENFA and symbol BuzzFeed. So we know that file actually, the contents of this file has changed over the months. So the symbol has changed from ENFA to BZFD. And because of that, this messes up your standard deviation for the calculations. And that's where the error is. So pretty cool. You can see how easy this is to actually monitor your sources. You monitor your, your you see your lineage, you see whenever a ticket comes in. Now, if you think of, or you find an error that you haven't thought of before, you would just go in, create a new rule, and then monitor that as well. And once a day or whenever you go in and you, see if there has been a new ticket created. To sum this up, lately people were asking me a lot about what's the future of data engineering? Do we even need data engineers in the future with all that automation? For me, tools like Kensu, they are the future. They help engineers like me, like you, to understand what is happening in your platform, in your pipelines, to be able to 
react quickly to problems to figure out where is the root cause of the issue. They are the prime example of how automation can help us achieve what we want to do without having to do the boring stuff, the mundane, the we have to do things because it's tightly integrated and you with you can use that with data observability driven development straight out of the box and it's really cool so i like it i hope you like it check out kenzu.io to learn more uh, yeah it was really fun creating this see you later